Church, if you are strong enough and you are able, I invite you to join me as we read from God's word. And I want to read a lengthy passage of scripture. When I say lengthy, I'm talking about 16 verses. But for us to fully understand the story and to know where we're going and have a glimpse at the conclusion, we need to get to verse 16. So I invite you to turn me in the Old Testament, book of Joshua, chapter 6. We read last week verses 1 through 6, but we'll read them over again. And then we'll go through verse 16. Joshua, chapter 6. All right? If you have your phones and you have your Bible on your phone, this is a wonderful time to use your Bible. And the church, uh, I mean your phone. And uh, we support you doing that. You know, it's better than to be playing games. All right? So let's have together from God's word. And if you want the exact translation I'm using, then you will follow on the wall. And here it says, Now Jericho was shut up in, inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city all the men of war going around the city once. Thus shall you do for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram horns before the ark. On the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times. And the priests shall blow the trumpets. And when they make a long blast with, with the ram horn, when you hear the song of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout with a great shout. And the wall of the city will fall down flat and the people shall go up everyone straight before him now we continue from last week so joshua the son of nun called the priests and said to them take the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram ram horn before the ark of the lord and he said to the people go forward march around the city let the armed men pass on before the ark of the lord and just as Joshua had commanded the people, seven priests bearing the seven trumpet of ram horn before the Lord went forward, blowing the trumpet with the ark of the covenant of the Lord following them. Verse 9 says this. The armed men were walking before the priests who were blowing the trumpet and the rear guards were walking after the ark while the trumpet blew continually. But Joshua commanded the people, listen, you shall not shout or make your voice heard, neither shall any word go out of your mouth until the day I tell you to shout. Then you shall shout. So he caused the ark of the Lord to circle the city, going about it once, and they came into the camp and spent the night in the camp. Verse 12 says this, Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord, and the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram horn before the ark of the Lord walked on. And they blew the trumpet continually. The armed men were walking before them. The rear guard were walking after the ark of the Lord while the trumpet blew continually. And the second day they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. So did for six days. On the seventh day they rose early at dawn of the day and marched around the city in the same manner seven times it was only on that day that they marched around the city seven times listen to verse 16 church verse 16 says this and at that seventh time when the priest had blew the trumpet joshua said to the people show for the lord has given you the city amen let us pray father this morning we are thankful that we have the opportunity to be able to be in your sanctuary to be in your house, to have been able, Lord, to worship you with our voices, Lord Jesus, this morning. Heavenly Father, as we come to this point in our service where you minister unto us through your word, we pray, Lord, that our hearts are ready to receive your word. Our hearts are open to hear your promise. Our hearts are ready to receive the promises you have given unto us from before we were even born. So, Lord, 
Equip us this morning to receive your word. And upon receiving your word, we pray, Lord Jesus, that we will not hold it to ourselves, but we will share it and we will use it to increase and to strengthen our personal relationship with you. Lord, we pray for each other this morning. We pray for every family, for every home that is represented here. May your spirit be with us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the overwhelming love and support you have given unto us, for meeting us, Lord, at our individual point of need each and every day. Lord, we pray for those who are troubled in spirit. May you minister unto them, Lord. May your Holy Spirit whisper your love, your compassion into their ear. And Father, may they hear, may they receive. Lord, we pray for those who are unable to be here this morning because they are hindered by some means or the other. Whether it be sickness, whether it be some other challenges, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will be with them. Comfort their hearts, Lord Jesus. And Father, allow them to be here at the next opportune time. We pray also, Lord, specifically for those who intentionally chose not to be here this morning. We pray, Lord, that you'll speak to their hearts. And Father, that they will remember your word that tells us on the first day of the week, we come into the house of the Lord and we worship you and we honor you with our gifts. So Lord, be with them. We pray a special prayer for our children, for our young people. Lord, we pray and ask that you'll be with them. That your guidance, your protection, your love, your mercy will rest upon them, Lord. And Father, that they will all grow up to be men and women who love you, who care about you, and who share your word wherever they go. Minister unto them, Lord Jesus. Minister unto us now, Lord. Father, may all that we do this morning, may all that we hear this morning come from you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. Thank you all for being here. Uh, this morning. All right, guys, last week, if you were here, all right, we introduced the message and we said, Listen, you are not to bail before your blessing. I want to do a quick review because several new faces are here and I don't want you to be in the dark too much. And I want to encourage you to find this message online and go over it. All right, we talk about the fall of Jericho as we look at God's word. And here are some other things, the highlights we said last week. We said, do not bail before your blessing come. Do not give up before God show up. Amen? We said, listen, the promised land did not mean a perfect land. The first thing you need to know is that barriers always come before the blessing. The people of Israel, they were expecting great blessing. But instead, the first thing they uh, met was a barrier. There is no, ex they were not expecting a barrier to come before the blessing. And many times, church, we're seeking a blessing. And we find ourselves uh, in front of a barrier. And so the wall block our perspective. Amen? The barrier always comes before the blessing. When we pray, we need to pray with the perspective that, listen, we, or God knows what is behind that barrier, what is behind that wall that you're facing. Pray for God to give you some perspective. I said, I encourage you, and I pray that, I said, last week, I said, pray that God gives you perspective this week. So it is my prayer that he gave you some perspective for those of you that are here. All right? In verse 1, as we looked at, it says the gate of Jericho were securely barred. Because of the Israelites, it says, listen, no one went in the gun and no one came out. It reminded us of COVID time. <laughs> All right? It was locked down. And then I said, locked doors can make us feel like we are locked out of God's blessing. And that is not true. So he said, don't stop praying just because a door gets shut in your face. Hmm. Some doors, or sometimes door is locked because Satan is behind trembling. Because he knows if that door is open, he's in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then I said this, God, when God closes the door, no human can open it. But when God opens the door, no human can keep it shut. Amen? Amen. Just because the door is locked doesn't mean 
you are locked out of God's blessing. You must keep on praying. Amen? And then I said, many people bail before the blessing comes. All right? And the wall, the barrier, the challenges that we meet is part of God's will for life. It says the wall causes us to fall, Sister Trace. It causes us either to fall on our knees or on our faces. Where do we fall? Without the wall, many of us will never pray. How many of you would be praying if things are just going wonderful? Church, you got to, you got to, you got to hold on. You know, you know, I'll say this and I'll go say this, you know. I remember my young, young days in life. When I go to my truck, I'm in, I'm in serious prayer. Because I'm praying, Lord, pray this truck starts. You know, I remember sometimes I give my workmen the key. And as I give them the key, they don't know. I go in the room praying, Lord, please let that truck start. You know, but listen, as things get better and you get better truck, you know, I have to remember to pray because, you, you know, the truck will start. It's new. It will start. And you could easily get comfortable. You know, just this morning as I sat in my truck to start, I said, Lord, help me to remember you. And I pray that this truck starts. But sometimes, church, when life gets comfortable, you forget to pray because it's just going good. It's just going good. And it's not until you hit a wall that you need to remember you fall on your knees. You know, some people keep telling me, Pastor, one of these days this class is going to crack. When it cracks, they say, Amen, we'll get a new one. <laughs> My wife worries each time, I tell you. And, and it's hard, though. Church, without the wall, you will never learn to walk in faith. Amen? And so this morning we want to move forward and we want to look, because we look just at verse 1. I want to look at verse 2 this morning as we move forward. Now, we have time, but I'm not sure what will happen here, but we'll see what will happen. Alright? So the first point this morning, because all that was our introduction last week, so if you missed the introduction, you hear for the big Shadan. That's what it said. Or how you say? Shabang. All right. <laughs> Church, you step in faith. You got to step in faith to possess your promise. It's very important. Look with me at verse 2 of our reading. It says this. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand. With its king and mighty men of follow. Notice with me, church, this morning. Notice what God said. God said, I have what? Given Jericho into your hand. He did not say, I will deliver Jericho into your hands. He did not say that one day I will give Jericho into your hand. He's saying it's a done deal. I have given Jericho into your hand. You don't need to worry about anything more. You have already won the battle. Right here he's saying that. It is over. It's done. God tell Joshua, listen. Because of my power, that wall has already fallen down. <laughs> Amen? But church, here is it. God is speaking that to Joshua. And when Joshua looks up, all he is seeing is the wall. <laughs> But what is happening? So Joshua now need to take a step of faith to possess and to take hold of the promise that God has given unto him. Just because God gives you something, it doesn't mean that you already possess it. Now sometimes, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking as I reflect, we, we, we sing that song, things are already better, and we're saying already better, but listen, we also have to move and take that betterment. It's not just going to be thrown upon us. Amen? You got to take a step of faith to receive what God is offering you. Amen? And this is the way God works. He's going to promise you something. 
You know, there's always used that story where I'm not going to do it this morning, where that pastor pulls out, you know, I should see. But uh, let me tell you, if I pull out some money out of my pocket and I ask someone to come and receive it, Deacon Jones will give me back. So if he says yes, then I'll do it. And he's in big trouble if he says yes. <laughs> Don't do it, Deacon. But church, here is something I want you to realize and watch earlier. In the book of Joshua, God made a very serious promise to Joshua. In chapter 1 and in verse 3, listen what he says. Every place where you set your foot in the promised land will be yours. Church, that's a massive promise. Every place where you set Set your foot in the promised land will be yours just as I have promised to Moses. Joshua should have great confidence that the Lord is with him. Church, you imagine someone tell you every place you step, you set your foot will be yours here on earth, how you will feel. God is telling him the promised land is his. As long as you do what? As long as you do what I ask you to do church but for him to possess he said this he says every place that you step but for him to take possession of any of it what does he have to do he got to step if he don't step it's not his right every place is yours wherever you put your feet is yours and so if you remain standing here and i'm saying everything that is out there is yours unless you start moving unless you start going it will not be yours. Amen? So church this morning I says, listen, we got to take a step in faith to take possession of what has been promised to us. Amen? And so church, that is the way God's work. You got to take a step of faith and he will open doors for you this morning. Church, you got to take a step of faith and he will give you victory over whatever you are having challenges with. Amen? You've got to take a step of faith and he will knock down any wall that you are facing. Amen? Church this morning, I want you to get excited. I want you to be from the perspective of God speaking to you as he spoke to Joshua. Because it's not just, you're not just going to hear. You've got to take a step of faith. It requires action on your part. What God was telling Joshua that every need you have is already met. All right? Church, this morning, you know, some of us, few of us, maybe many of us, maybe all of us have financial need. But God says, listen, take a step of faith. If you obey me, if you tithe, if you put me first in your finances, if you obey my commandment, your financial need is already met. I was hoping some people would say amen. You know, I was hoping some people would say amen. Listen, the thing is, it means that we are all, no, no, let's take it back. I can't use we. You are all financially okay. <laughs> Gotta take it back. Church, God promised that he, that, uh, that he can do all things for us. Amen. Guys listen. God promises us. And he has promises for us. But we have to step in faith. To receive it. Amen. When you stop stepping in faith. Guess what? You stop receive your blessing. Amen. Do not stop stepping in faith. Because you gotta, you got to step in faith to receive your blessing. Just obey. You know, sometimes people say, Pastor, it's just too hard. I'm sure some people say, Pastor, I'm not going to get up in the seat for five dollars. <laughs> and guess what, Sister Trace? They'll be too slow for 50 if it comes. Church, Joshua had to step in faith against the battle against the enemy. Alright? 
God promised him that he would give him the victory. But here is the church. God promised us victory in our lives. But Satan is not just going to sit down and let us take that victory. And let us take what God has for us. He is going to challenge us every step of the way. But we got to remember. Remember the promise? Every place you put your feet on will be yours. But in order for you to get it, you got to step forward. You got to take a step of faith. And God will fight for you and he will go before you. God says the battle is already won. It is already yours, Joshua. The battle has already been won. But church, when Joshua and his men look up, all they see is this big wall. God sees a victory, but they see a wall. Amen? And that is, that is, very, that is very, very important, church. Here is a question I want to ask. What do you do when what you see don't line up with what God has said? What do you do when what you see don't line up with what God has said? What do you do when you see in, what, in, in terms what you see in front of you doesn't line up with what God has said to you? What do you do? That's very real this morning, church. Because many times, God speaks to us and God tells us he's going to do something, but that's not what we are seeing. You see, what do we do when God says, I will fill you with joy, as found in Romans chapter 15. But instead, you are filled with depression and you cannot see a way out. What do you do? God says, you have my peace. That goes beyond all understanding. But you feel overwhelmed with anxiety. And you cannot seem to get rid of it. What do you do when God says, I have given you the victory. But you look around you and all you see is defeat. What do you do? What do you do when God says, I have given you wonders. But all you see is the wall. Church, if you don't realize by now, that wall is your challenge. Alright? That wall, you can personalize it in any way you choose. You see, the reality is, church, this is at the point that many of us bail out. When we don't see what we want to see or what we believe should line up with what God wants us to see, here is where many of us get ready to run. To bail out. To move on. And all God is saying, you need to take another step in faith. You need to take another step to possess what is promised to you. Amen? You need to keep praying. In faith. Believe in God to deliver on his promises. And so this morning I say, do not bail out before your blessing. Do not bail out before your blessing. Deacon, if you recall, you realize nobody left before 12 or after 12 either. <laughs> Church, but the reality is, like many other, myself sometimes we bail out just before that blessing. When things doesn't line up with what God sees. But there have also been many times and each and every one of you who have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and indwelling Savior. Know that when you kept on praying and you kept on stepping, let me tell you, you came into the blessings that God had promised for you. Amen? And so God is teaching us that we need to depend on him. Amen? We need to depend on him. So the first step is to step in faith to possess the promise. The second is this. Stay in faith when you do not see progress. Mm. You don't want to quit, Sister Trace. You don't want to run. And so here is the part. As I said, we are a society and we want things when? Now. Tomorrow is too late. 
An hour from now is too far. We want things and we want it now. But church, you've got to be able to stay fit when you do not see what God is doing. Even when you do not see any progress. If you really stop and look at this story. And I want you to go over it. You talk about not seeing progress. This was seven long days. And six days went completely without seeing any progress. Just read me. Let me read quickly. Verse 7 through verse 11. He says, and he said to the people, go forward, march around the city, and let the armed men pass on before the ark of the Lord. And, as, and just as Joshua had commanded the people, seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of Ramhorn before the Lord went forward, blowing the trumpet with the ark of the covenant of the Lord following them. The armed men were walking before the priests who were blowing the trumpet, the rear guard walking after the ark while the trumpet blew continually. But Joshua commanded the people, You shall not shout or make your voice heard, neither shall any word go out of your mouth until the day I tell you to shout. Then you shall shout. So he caused the ark of the Lord to circle the city, going about it once. And they came into the camp and spent the night in the camp. Amen? Which I'm trying to find where I have my... Uh, okay, good. It's just really warm, but... It's a challenge. We'll get through it. Church, the Israelites walk or march around the walls of Jericho. And they were given a strong task. Because it says, walk around and be quiet. Don't talk. Now that, that's, even, that's even rough. Nothing is happening and you are just to walk and don't talk. You know, next month on the 21st, we are going to have a, a parade. And you imagine they tell those students, don't talk. <laughs> it was a huge procession, church. I want you to really think. It, it, it shows us right here. The priests, they were set up. The armed guards before them. Then the priests. Then you had some other armed guards. It was a lovely uh, a procession going through. The trumpet was blowing. And the people of Jericho, they were inside watching all this. Church, one person said it probably took them one hour to go around the wall. And they went and they did that. And Joshua said, go back. Go back to camp. You imagine, Deacon, they called you and said, now we know we're going to war. But here is this huge wall. We don't know what to do. We don't know what's on the other side. But on the top of it, there are some men lining up with, 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 with these, ar these arrows to take us out. And Joshua says, walk around it. And when we are done, he says, go back home now. We'll come back tomorrow. And we are going to do this for six days. Church, what level of progress are you seeing there? On the seventh day, they march around the city. Now, do the maths. He said, if it takes them one hour to go around it once. And they do that for six days and they went home. Now, the seventh day, they're not going to just do it once, but they're going to do it six times. Before they go again. You see, they have done it for six days and they have nothing to show for it. They haven't seen any progress. How many of us? Are that patient in here this morning? <laughs> How many of us are that patient in here this morning? That we could summon you all to let's march around this, 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 this community. Expecting God to do great things. And we're going to do it every day for one hour. How many of you will show up with me on day two? Nobody looks at us. Nobody come out and talk to us. And then if make it worse, I said, nobody speak. How many of you will go with me? You see, God is in control because if it was us, we would have said, listen, we're going to this battle. So on day one, as we walk, 
As you finish, in order to encourage you, we'll have a few black straps. <laughs> right? So at least you go home and say, listen, we're making some progress. Right? After day two or three, you have a two or three feet of wall fell. I say, listen, guys, it's happening. Let's continue. We're going to do it. Progress is taking place. Because everybody needs motivation, right? To go forward. But church, that is us. We will be thinking, encouraging. I don't know what will happen on day uh, four or five, and you know, and definitely day seven we need help. But God, nothing happened, church. Nothing took place. And so here's the question this morning. What do you do when you're praying for a miracle and you do not see any progress? That's the, key, that's the question, right? What do we do? We're praying for a miracle. And no progress. The problem that you're dealing with is right in front of you and you're just circling it, circling it, and circling it. You see, some of us have been circling our problems. Whether it's a broken heart, damaged emotions, circling around and praying around and things is not getting better. Some of us Maybe circling around marriage problem. And nothing seems to be changing over and over. Some of us may be circling around our children. Or one of our child that is giving trouble. And the more we pray for them, the more trouble they give. What do you do? What do you do when you're praying for a miracle? And you're praying and you're praying and things get worse. What do you do? Here's my suggestion to you this morning, church. You stay in faith and leave the result to God. Can you take on such a challenge? Stay in faith and leave the result to God. Church, let me tell you something. When you cannot see God working, when you cannot see any progress, when you cannot see what is going on, God is still at work. Amen? That's one of the things that we got to remember because we don't see it doesn't mean God is not working. He's still at work. Sometimes we cannot see what is happening in front of the wall. But let me tell you, when we can't see what is happening, something is happening inside of us. Amen? God is preparing us for the wall to fall. Because you've got to be prepared, church. Yes, it's a challenge. But when that challenge is removed from you, you've got to be prepared. God is drawing you closer to him as he prepares you, all right? I found this, and I think this is real good. I want, you all to, I want you all to understand this with me, church. It is the pain of the wall not falling that draws you closer to God's presence. It's the challenges of the wall not falling. It's the problem that you have. Because you have that problem, you got to pray every day. I tell you, I used to pray real hard for my truck to start. It's no joke, you know, real hard. And in doing so, it does draw you closer to the Lord. And church, just, just to put this in, you know, when I say pray for each other, when we see each other in the street, the more you're in prayer, the closer it draws you to the Lord. And that's why it's a really effective way to bring you closer to God. When the trouble is happening, when that wall is in front of you, church, we got to be able to walk in faith. This is where sometimes it says, walk by faith and not by, and not by sight. We can't see it, but God is doing it. Amen? Amen? Church, what happens when we're praying for something and it gets worse? My challenge to you this morning, do not give up. Do not bail out. Amen? Real maturity is staying in faith and refusing to leave when the, when, uh, uh, and refusing to leave but to leave the result to God. Amen? I want you all to get mature, church. Refusing to leave but leave the result to God. When you pray for a blessing, stay for the blessing. Get that? 
When you pray for a blessing, brother, stay for the blessing. It's important. Don't bail out. One person, one person says this, and it's, and it's real good. He says, in life, you get what you pray for, and you get what you stay for. But that is true in a very effective way. Because how many times have many people come right here to this church and ask us to pray for them, pray with them, but they don't stay for it. We pray with them, and they leave before the blessing comes. Church, you got to plant. But when you plant, the, the tree don't grow up immediately and start producing fruit. You got to stay with it. You got to clear it. You got to uh, nourish it. You got to fertilize it. And when you do that, eventually, the fruit is going to, the tree is going to bear fruit. And you are going to be able to pull in a harvest. If you don't stay with it, you won't receive it. Let me tell you, you plant it and you can't wait and you go away, someone else will come and enjoy it for you. Amen? Because it will be a fruit. And you know, sometimes some people come and we pray for them for their blessing and they leave and praise God, we get it. <laughs> this is a trace you know, say sometimes, if you don't want your blessing, give to me. Many times they do indirectly because they leave before they get it and you receive it. Amen? You see, God dreams for life is much bigger than our dream for life. You realize that? Not only that it's much bigger, but God dream for life takes much longer. Because we have a dream, and we dream that dream last night, and listen, tomorrow that's what happen. <laughs> Isn't that so? We want it. Church, listen, it takes time, and I want to share this experience with you. We had a dream as a church. We want to build a Sunday school building. And we started before COVID. But we did not give up on that dream. And we kept going at that dream. We kept going at that dream. COVID time, even after COVID. And this morning, we can look at the end of that street. And we can see the result of that dream. It did not happen overnight. And let me tell you, if we could boast a little bit, everybody wants to know who owned that building. You know, that building is the talk of this community right now. People give it their own name. You know, you know, the, 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 the persons, the, the persons from, uh, I'm going, uh, yes, yeah, I'm going, from the friends community, they were stalking out the building because they said they want to know who is in there. They want to get involved with what is happening there. And so they were stalking it out till one day it's open and they went in and they found someone working and says, listen, who owned this building? And so the connection was made and we have connections with them. And just in case they gave me a task to give an announcement. I don't remember the date, but it's probably the first. When school opened? It's the weekend before primary school opened. Parents, they are doing free haircuts and free hair braiding for young children. All right? The flyer, I, I, I'll, I'll make sure I uh, announce it closer to the date. So, you can get your child's hair cut and comb. All right? Uh, I'm not sure what that part is. <laughs> He's saying bring your own bread. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking... You know, yeah, you, you plat it's going to be like plating of your own hair. <laughs> I'm thinking. All right. <laughs> I'm thinking that might be. Well, listen, church. That, that's a nice one. You can, church, let me share with you a passage of scripture. Taken from Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 3. Because many times we want something and we want it now. Here's what the word of God says. But these things I plan won't happen right away. Slowly, steadily, surely, the time approaches when the vision will be fulfilled. If it seems slow, do not despair, for these things will surely come to pass. Just be patient. They will not be overdue a single day. All right? Someone needs that this morning. It doesn't matter what you are going through, what your wall is. Listen, if you leave the result to God, it will not be late, not a single day. Amen? Amen. The word of God, the promises of God, church. Stay for a blessing. 
Do not give up. Because it says, listen, I will meet your need. It, no, it doesn't matter how long it takes. But hear what? It is never going to be overdue. Amen? That's really amazing. Church, it's going to come. It may not come right now. But what we need to do is stay in faith. All right? And then the Lord will minister unto us. Do not give up when we don't see progress. Third point is this. Keep walking in faith until you see the wall fall. You have some challenges you're dealing with. Keep walking in faith until it crumbles. Amen? Church, what is interesting, as Joshua spoke to the people, you realize, if you're with me, Joshua never told the people specifically what God told him. He did not. All he did, he told them, walk around the walls. All right? He did not tell them what the Lord said will happen on the seventh day. I'm not sure why. I feel Joshua had great faith. Listen, that he's speaking to these people. And if these people are really going to follow God, they got to and, and know that God is directing me. They got to trust me and be with me and listen to what I got to say. It's the same thing I say. How many of you will follow me? And I just say, come every day. And then I say, man, I don't know how long past I keep up this thing, this, 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 this marching. But the people did not give up. They continued. And church, I'm not sure why, but he had them walk around for six days. Six days. And then on the seventh day, he says, we'll do six lap one day. You know, no, six first. Right? Every day where they were there, they were just doing one for each day. For six days. And now on day seven, says, let's go for six. Church, here is it. The blessing is about to come. Day seven, lap six. And this is the point that many people bail out. Just before the blessing comes. This is where many of us bail out. Pastor, I've been praying for this for too long. I give up. Anybody know that's that way? This morning I want to encourage you. And I want to tell you. You may be on lap 6. Lap 7 is right in front of you. In order for you to receive your blessing. In order for you to receive your promise. You got to step out in faith. And you got to receive it. One more lap to go. The people there did not know that. But Joshua knew. So do not stop on lap six. I want you to remember that. You got to keep walking in faith. Take the next lap, expecting it's going to be the final one. Church, when we rise up every morning, and we have been praying and praying, when you rise up, rise up with the expectation that this is the day my promise is going to come true. And when nothing happened, no progress happened, just start back tomorrow morning. You're on lap six. Lap seven is right around. Don't give up before you reach lap seven. Okay? Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. And when you can't walk, you crawl. Isn't that so? Church, sometimes we, you're about to give up just before the blessing comes. Don't get caught up with, I need it to happen and I need it to happen now. No. The blessing is coming. If you ask God for it, he's going to give you it. He says, ask whatever you will. And church, in verse 16, I just want to jump, I'm going to jump here. It says, at the seventh time, when the priest had blown the trumpet. Joshua said to the people, Shout! That woke up a few of you. For the Lord has given you the city. Shout! For the Lord has answered your prayer. Shout! For your wall has come falling down. Amen? The Lord has given you the city this morning, church. 
I don't know what your city is. I don't know what your wall is. It may be filled with enemies just fighting against you. I don't know what your wall is, church. But you might be on lap six. Don't give up. Keep walking in faith. All right? Keep walking. Because the next step might be the step that brings you the fulfillment of your promise. Keep walking. Keep walking in faith. And as I said, church, when you can't walk, what are you to do? You got to crawl. It's important that you get that church. Don't give up. All right? And so this morning, I want to stop there. I'm going to lose my voice shortly. It's almost there. Here's the promise. Do not bail out before you receive your blessing. Amen? Whatever it is that might be your challenge, don't bail out. Don't give up. I'm hoping that this morning, the Lord will minister unto you in a way that whatever your wall is, whatever your challenge is that you're facing this morning, you know, feel like giving up. I've tried all I could. Put it in the hands of the Lord and allow him to take control. So this week, as we leave here, what are we going to remember? We're going to walk in faith. we got to step out that we are not going to give up before we receive our blessing. Amen? Thank you for watching our messages and for watching our channel. If you have not done so yet, can you subscribe and be a part of the family of Paul Baptist Church? God bless you.